Hey, 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 and welcome to episode 4 of Muscling In. This is a very cool episode, in my opinion. Uh, there's a lot of technical information, but it will be very helpful, I promise. So, we're gonna talk about nutrient timing for lean bulking, and then I'm gonna show you a full day of eating while lean bulking because uh, I realized that the the full day of eating that I've showed you so far, uh, the, the last video in Timisoara and the other ones were more like exceptions. I, I ate out a lot and uh, I always went over my calories and I want to show you how a normal day of lean bulking looks like for me. And there are, there are a few very important lessons you'll be able to pick up from that. Okay, so nutrient timing for lean bulking. Now, nutrient timing is a very broad term. It includes everything from diet structure to number of meals to food distribution to peri-workout nutrition uh, to macronutrients, timing, carbohydrates and protein, everything. Uh, I'm not gonna cover all that in one video because it would be absurdly long. In this video, I just wanna answer two basic questions that I get very often. The first one is, do I need to eat before working out? Does that matter? And uh, second of all is, uh, do you need to eat immediately after working out? When people ask these questions, I think that what they want to know is um, if peri-workout nutrition affects muscle growth, uh, meaning protein breakdown and protein synthesis. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. The most extensive and conclusive information I've ever read about nutrient timing uh, was these two papers right here. I'm gonna link them on the screen. These two papers are two meta-analyses done by Alan Aragon and Brad Schoenfeld. And uh, what a meta-analysis is, is it's, uh, it looks at all of the studies on a particular subject and draws a conclusion based on all of them. When uh, writing one of these papers, uh, Alan Aragon and Brad Schoenfeld actually set out to find out if there is a post-workout anabolic window. You know, that window uh, where you have to eat nutrients to maximize muscle growth. And what they have found is that that, uh, that window isn't as small as people think. It's actually several hours. So uh, eating immediately after working out isn't that important. One of the quotes from that paper actually summarizes that Perfectly. I'm gonna put it up on the screen right now. So what they're basically saying is that it's best to not let more than six to eight hours pass between your last pre-workout meal and your post-workout meal. So your training bout should be sandwiched between two meals, both of which should include some protein. You know those guys that uh, have a protein shake immediately after finishing their workout, they go in the locker room and BAM, they drink a protein shake. Well, uh, most of the time that is completely unnecessary because if they had a pre-workout meal, uh, protein synthesis can start and if they go home and, and uh, they will have a meal anyway, uh, that protein shake is unnecessary. And if you're cutting, usually those are wasted calories. Now, uh, this recommendation would seem to go against fasted training. And uh, to be honest, the research uh, shows that completely fasted training isn't a good idea. And also that delaying your post-workout meal isn't a good idea as well, because uh, uh, you are in a catabolic state. But I, to be honest, I don't know how much of a difference breaking these rules makes. Because if you look at real, real world examples, like uh, uh, a lot of intermittent fasting guys, they train fasted without BCAAs or protein beforehand, and they delay their post-workout meal one to three hours even more, and they still make excellent gains. Some people actually train early in the morning on an empty stomach without having BCAAs or protein beforehand, and then they delay their post-workout meal until lunch and uh, still they make good uh, strength gains and muscle gains. One of the reasons that happens, in my opinion, is that uh, these guys usually have a very large meal in the evening, uh, maybe 100 grams of protein and a lot of carbs, 
So digesting and absorbing that meal takes a long time. When they train in the morning, they usually still have amino acids in their bloodstream and protein synthesis can start even if they delay that post-workout meal. I believe that this guideline applies for uh, small to medium meals because the anabolic effect of a meal depends on how many calories you eat. So if you have a very large meal, that will put you in an anabolic state for a longer period of time and you can probably extend this window to above 10 hours. So uh, you can train on an empty stomach and still um, grow, have protein synthesis after that. Now, could you make better gains if you didn't train fasted and uh, you didn't delay that post-workout meal a few hours? I don't know, maybe, but uh, the effect would still be very small. Because if you look at the nutritional pyramid of importance, you will see that nutrient timing is still uh, close to the top, meaning it's not that important. What actually matters the most for your body composition is the total calories and macros you consume in one day. The way you distribute food doesn't matter that much. Now with that said, as far as I'm concerned, if uh, I was forced to train early in the morning and I still wanted to do intermittent fasting, so uh, to delay my first meal until uh, lunchtime, well, I would actually have a protein shake after working out in the morning. Why? Because uh, I'm pretty obsessive about this stuff and I couldn't shake the thought that I'm leaving some gains on the table. I couldn't help but think that the fact that I'm delaying that meal is actually hampering my progress. And even if that didn't matter, the fact that it affects me negatively on a psychological level would actually um, affect my results negatively in other areas as well. So I believe that if you're obsessive like that, like, like, like me, then um, I wouldn't recommend delaying that meal. guys I hope that clears up some of the confusion around nutrient timing uh, I know that I didn't cover everything in this video there's still a lot more to cover but uh, you can learn that by going to this meta-analysis right here and all that now it's currently almost 3 p.m. it's time to have my first meal <laughs> Check this out guys, this is my first meal and uh, I absolutely love it. Over the last 4 weeks or so since I've been in a surplus, I've been experimenting with different uh, diet structures, meaning different number of meals and uh, different food distribution and food choices, so I can find the most enjoyable and effortless way uh, for me to eat. After a lot of experimenting, this is what I finally came up with. So this is how my diet structure for lean bulking looks like at the moment. I'm still doing intermittent fasting, so that's why I have a coffee for breakfast and that's it. And then uh, around noon I have my first meal and as you can see it's designed to be around 500-700 uh, calories, medium protein, high fiber, low fat and low carb and this is what uh, what I just had because I had some cheese which is uh, medium protein uh, some fruit which is high fiber overall it was pretty low carb and of course it was low fat so that was my first meal it fits that model perfectly my experience was that uh, eating random foods at random times during the day is not a good plan it makes you think about food all the time it uses a lot of your willpower because you are trying to decide what you should eat. And uh, what's more important is that because you are using your macros on what is convenient instead of what you enjoy most, it makes your diet seem more stressful and less enjoyable overall. You'll see how the foods I'm going to have later in the day also fit this diet structure. 
so it is currently 5 30 pm and what i'm doing is i'm editing this very video that you're watching right now i usually do that i edit the video while, while i'm uh, making it and what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna have a bottle of chocolate this will be my second meal my high fat meal medium carb low protein low fiber this is my second meal when i'm not having chocolate what i what i have is um, nuts and seeds a combination of nuts and seeds and dry fruits or I, I have some high fat ice cream so it's always some sort of dessert this is my second meal i'm gonna enjoy this and then i'm gonna go to the gym Alright, 9 p.m. post-workout meal. Really simple stuff. I have here some uh, chicken breast, about 250 grams. I have a mix of different veggies, mushrooms, tomatoes, uh, some peas, some uh, sweet corn and uh, some chili peppers. And of course, to go with the chicken breast, a few sauces, some chili sauce and some mustard. I tried to make this look artistic, but uh, it, it, it didn't work. Anyway, here are the macros for this meal. And what you need to watch out for is that it fits my model. So what I want for this meal is to be high protein, medium to high fiber, low fat and low carb. And as you can see, it fits perfectly in my diet structure because I'm going to have the carbs as the second part of my meal. All right, 10 p.m., the last meal of the day. Check this out. These are some sort of crackers. I guess this is how you would translate these. And uh, uh, they are awesome. The macros on these are amazing. So uh, it's only 8 grams of fat for 100 grams. And uh, each of these bags is 80 grams. So these are awesome for a high carb meal. I want to show you a life hack. So instead of taking a bowl to eat chips or crackers or whatever, you can do this instead. You take the bag and you uh, make a little hole in the middle of it and then you do this. And boom, you've got yourself a bowl. And you don't have to, uh, you can easily pick the, the chips or the crackers from the bag. Mmm! Alright, so this will be my final meal. Three bags of these crackers. And as you can see, it fits my plan perfectly. High carb, low protein, low fat, low fiber. High carb. This is my last meal. Or rather the second part of my last meal. And uh, what I want you to take away from this video is that the diet structure is extremely important for making your eating plan enjoyable and effortless. You need to experiment and uh, find a diet structure that you love so much that you want to eat like that every day. When you do that, you will never want to cheat again and uh, dieting, maintenance or lean bulking will become effortless. This is it. This is my advice. Thank you for watching this video. If you have any questions, leave them below. I will answer as many as I can. And don't forget to uh, download my free ebooks. Alright, I'll be seeing you next time. See ya.